One of the main things we'll be talking about this week is graphic style. And generally speaking, those are the choices made when creating a two-dimensional image. Some components of graphic style include the degree of stylization or abstraction, the color palette, and the projection system used. Here we have an example from David Mazzuccelli of a heterogeneous or a consonant graphic style. And this is an image where different sections are represented using contrasting graphic styles. So within an image, you might find one or more different graphic styles. And you can see a larger example of that here, where one figure is rendered in this kind of very geometric sort of clean lined way. The other figure is represented with cross hatches in a different color. So those two graphic styles help to push different concepts in these images. We're also going to be talking about color palettes. And we've got a couple of examples here of specific kinds of color schemes from Shauna X. So in this image here, we can see an analogous color palette. This is using colors that are located next to one another on the color wheel. And we can see on the left here, the color wheel with colors that are used in this image. So we've got an orange and a red and a purple. Those are all right next to one another on the color wheel. This image is a very straightforward example of a color scheme where it's just analogous. Uh, that won't always happen though. And often you'll find different color palettes or different color schemes mixed with one another in the same image. So you can see some examples here of a color palette that's kind of a mix of a triadic and a tetradic, where triadic is using colors that are equally spaced around the color wheel. And we can kind of see that with the, the blue and the yellow and the reds in this image. But we're also pretty close to the tetradic or double complementary, where we're using two sets of complementary colors. So you can see the red and the green are complementary, and the yellow and the blue are almost complementary. So don't feel like your image just has to use one color scheme. Uh, these are just ways of talking about relationships between colors. We're also going to talk about projection systems. So how is the artist translating something that is three-dimensional to the two-dimensional screen or page? And we've already talked about linear perspective and atmospheric perspective. Those are two ways of creating depth in a two-dimensional image. Now, believe it or not, there are many different ways of projection into the 2D space. Uh, so one example of that is oblique projection. And you can see that in a lot of Asian art styles. So this is an example from Xu Yang. Uh, this is probably about a 1700s, late 1700s uh, detail of a scroll. And what's going on here in terms of how these forms are being rendered, you can see in the faces of the building, those are parallel to the image plane or the paper. And then the sides are projecting out at about a 45 degree angle. So there's actually no perspective here. There's not that convergence towards a point on the horizon that we might see in other ways of rendering space. And we can see a bigger version of this artist's work here uh, with the same idea. So the faces of the building are exactly parallel in horizontal and vertical dimensions to the image plane. And then the sides of the buildings are projecting out at an angle to those fronts. We can see some more examples of different styles of projection systems uh, in the artist Chris Ware, really interesting comic book artist and doing exactly the kinds of illustration that we're talking about in this unit. So here we see axonometric projection, uh, and this is where objects are made to appear inclined. So you can see this building kind of looks like it's slanting up uh, towards the back, and we're showing three sides at the same time. So in some ways, we could talk about axonometric projection being more accurate since we can see where lines are parallel to one another. We don't get that convergence towards the point on the horizon like we do with linear perspective, uh, but we still might get some distortions. For example, if we have round shapes or diagonal lines like are going on in this column here, those might get distorted, but less distortion than with linear perspective. We could also see an orthographic projection. And this is just a single view of an object, such as the view from the front here on the drawing surface. So we're not really getting the views of the sides of objects that we might get with axonometric or oblique projections. Another really strange and interesting uh, projection system is reverse perspective. So this follows all the same rules as linear perspective. The difference is the convergence point, rather than being off towards the horizon line is actually closer to the front of the image plane. 
So you can see that things are getting smaller as they get closer to the image plane and bigger as they get farther away. You can see another example of that here. And it's amazing to me how such a small shift can just really upend the feeling of looking at an image. And this to me sure feels like, wow, I don't know what the heck is going on. So those examples should give you some really good food for thought in terms of thinking about a graphic style for this week's assignment. So thinking about how realistic you want to show something, thinking about what sort of color palette you want to use, and what sort of projection system you might use. Please also take some time and look through the rest of the links on that list and spend some time reviewing the design terms. I promise those are going to be helpful connections for you working on your assignment for this week. Good luck!